the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. With today's Gospel, we start to understand the cosmic proportion of what happened at that nativity, at the nativity at Christmas, and what it meant for Jesus who was with God at the very creation of the universe to be born in a fleshy baby human body. Accounts of Jesus' birth in Matthew and Luke tell us a little bit about the type of world he was born into, a world where two parents had to question their options as they fled a power-hungry emperor, a world where a young unwed mother had to fear for her own safety because of societal expectations, A world where barren women like Elizabeth were told they were not as important and they were valued less. And scholar Walter Brueggemann describes these types of experiences, times filled with despair and when it's difficult to find hope, as situations of exile. He says that the world that Jesus was born into was one of exile. Everything was far from what it should have been. And everyone was far from the sense of being at home. I do not know personally what actual exile is like, but I wonder if we can't all relate to this feeling of not being fully at home and when it's hard to find hope. A lot of us during the pandemic have experienced what it means to not be fully ourselves or to be able to do the things that we usually did or to go to places we usually went. But if I'm honest with myself, even before the pandemic, there were many times I didn't feel 100% at home. Times that negative messages picked up by maybe traumatic experiences or the culture at large led me into experiences of exile. Messages like, I don't belong or I'm not good enough, have made me feel far from others, far from help, far from hope. Mental health experts like Jamie Merritt explain that many of us hold these unhealed wounds around core beliefs that are deeply rooted inside ourselves. She says these core beliefs tend to be about five areas, safety, responsibility, value, power, and choice. Perhaps you can relate to one or more of these core beliefs that manifest themselves in messages like, I'm always in danger, or I should have known better, or I'm worthless. 
Or perhaps you struggle with messages like, I just cannot ever succeed. Or, I have no options left. These types of deep-seated messages and lies, really, that come to us at all hours can keep us from taking risks, speaking up and out, reaching out to others, forgiving ourselves and forgiving others. They keep us in a kind of exile as they don't allow us to be 100% at home in our own bodies, and they keep us from imagining new possibilities for ourselves and for the world. Luckily, Christmas shows us that no exile, either politically forced, culturally imposed, or self-perpetuated, is too big for God to bring new life to. John reminds us how God's love did not stay at a cosmic level, but it came to the most local and intimate level that it could. John says that the word of God became flesh. The Greek here could also be understood as literally tenting or tabernacling, which can refer to when God was with the Israelites as they wandered in the desert and God pitched God's tent as they moved from place to place. In other words, when the word of God becomes flesh, the word of God makes its home among exiled people in the desert and in first century Palestine when God was born as baby Jesus. God no longer was just a God beyond this world, somewhere out there in the cosmos, but God made a home on earth, here. And at the same time, God brought new life and new possibilities into the despair and the abandonment of exile experiences. Those who received Jesus found home in the midst of exile and were gathered into God's expansive community of love to be children of God and to receive grace upon grace. The word of God becoming flesh was an act against exile. Again, echoing Walter Brueggemann, he says, Christmas indeed is an act against exile. In Jeremiah, God created new life for the Israelites during exile. God gathered the people in who were most who were in the most difficult situations. God called in the blind, the lame, those with child, and even women in labor. People who never thought they would have ha uh, would have a home, they found home again. They find new life and possibilities together in God's community. Today, too, the word of God continues to make its home in our lives and offer new life in the midst of our exile experiences. God desires to bring the possibility of healing and of something new in the midst of our unhealed wounds and those negative messaging that comes with them. Especially this time of year when everyone is making New Year's resolutions, it's easy, it's so easy for that negative messaging to flare up and, mesh and pressure us to pick out every flaw and imperfection that we have. And I'm not saying that we should not try to improve, but what if? as we seek healing of our wounds, of course, using all the spiritual and mental health resources at our disposal, what if we realize that on every stage of the healing journey, Jesus offers us home. He offers grace upon grace and offers a community of love where all are broken, yet still children of God. The God of the cosmos broke through the complexity of the world and can break through the messiness of our psychology and our lives and our relationships. Home is within reach, which means that we can live the promise of new possibilities even in the midst of healing and in the midst of experiences of exile. In a moment, we'll take communion together where Bread and wine are a physical reminder of God's tenting with us. 
God becoming flesh. Each week, God brings God's universized love and grace home to us. May we receive grace upon grace offered to us here today. Amen.